Hi everyone, Garth here. For the first time in Psych Sessions history, we will be doing a re-release this week, back-to-back with a re-release last week. Both of great contributors to the teaching of psychology who recently passed away. Dr. Lee Gorell was an amazing contributor to high school psychology and changed the trajectory of high school psychology in our country and affected the lives of many teachers and students. You're going to hear more about that in a moment. We lost Dr. Gorell earlier this month, and I had the opportunity to see some high school educators uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about Lee Gorell, uh, Kristen Whitlock, Amy Feinberg, Annette Nielsen. You probably remember this conversation. We were talking about where psychology in the high school would be without him. Now, I didn't know Lee very well, but I will tell you that for the hour I met him and from what I observed about him, he was a very sweet man a very caring and generous man. And he just wanted to do some good. And uh, he wanted to do that in the teaching of psychology. And so I think it's close to all of our hearts. If you've never heard this interview before, even if you've heard it a few years ago, it's worth listening to again. It's an amazing story. Here he is, Dr. Lee Gorell. Welcome to Psych Sessions, conversations about teaching and stuff. I'm Garth Newfeld, along with Eric Landrum, your podcast host. As the name implies, we talk about teaching, but we often veer into other interesting topics, which is the end stuff. This is episode 59, where I had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Lee Gorell, who has contributed so much to the teaching of psychology. So, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Mostly, we're going to focus on his presidential citation from Dr. Jessica Henderson Daniel as a citizen psychologist for his work with high school psychology. And uh, as we get going here, I thought it might be nice for me just to read this presidential citation, and this will set up a lot of the interview. So, um, let me begin. Lee Gorell, PhD, is recognized with this APA Citizen Psychologist Presidential Citation for his sustained advocacy for psychology at the secondary level and high school psychology teachers nationwide. Gorell has donated generously to the American Psychological Foundation to support his steadfast vision of increasing high-quality resources and professional development opportunities for high school teachers of psychology. In 2004, Gorell initiated the APA TOPS APF Clark University Workshop for Teachers of High School Psychology with combined donations to APF and Clark. With his generosity, participants are able to attend for free. Held each summer since 2005, the workshop brings together 25 high school psychology teachers to learn from master teachers and psychology faculty to enhance their teaching and understanding of psychological science. In 14 years, over 300 teachers have attended this workshop, and thousands of students have benefited from their teachers' growth. In 2010, Gorell further donated funding to allow the development of APA Teachers of Psychology in Secondary Schools, TOPS, lesson plans, and other forms of professional development for teachers. For example, networking grants allow teachers to collaborate at a grassroots level, and regional groups have formed nationwide. In 2013, Gorell donated additional funding to APF to continue championing high school psychology in explaining his reasoning behind another donation for an endowed education fund to Clark University. Gorell stated, I feel that I, as we all do, owe a debt to the teachers and institutions that equipped us for fuller, more satisfying lives. But Gorell's support is more than financial. He thrives on encouraging teachers and generously sharing his time with them. 
His nominator and endorsers credit Gorel's personal involvement and their participation in the Clark Workshop for connecting them to a rich network of passionate professionals in the field. In addition to strengthening relationships and teachers' expertise, the Clark Workshop has inspired new leadership. For example, many of the participants have become elected members of the APA TOPS Committee and or have returned to Clark as master teachers. Gorel also went to Xi'an, China as a volunteer teacher of English. This experience galvanized numerous donations to individuals and organizations. For example, he enhanced funding for the second and third prize recipients in the Chinese American Citizen Alliance essay contest, What Being an American Means to Me. Gorel has supported several programs at Northern Virginia Community College, where he took seniors' tuition-free courses. His endowments include a Student Emergency Financial Assistance Fund, enhanced support of selected staff and curriculum, and support of the Great Expectations Program for foster youth. He also made donations to enhance the grounds and the library, and a donation so a previously homeless student was able to enroll. And that's the end of the citation. Obviously, Dr. Gorel has given so much to teachers and students, and so many people owe him a great debt. It was fantastic to talk to him, and you're going to hear some of these stories right from him in this interview. So without further delay, let's get to this interview with citizen psychologist Dr. Lee Gorel. Hi, everyone. This is Garth, and I am at uh, the buildings, the offices for the American Psychological Association, and I am with Dr. Lee Gorel, and uh, it is an absolute privilege to uh, be here with you today and to share a stage with you <laughs> <laughs> earlier today. Uh, so welcome to this podcast, this, uh, which I'm sure you've never heard about, but I appreciate you doing it. I'm delighted to be asked. Great. Um, so let's start with why we're here. Um, and maybe I'll start with you. Uh, you, you live nearby. I, I imagine you drove here. Yes. Uh, we, we live in uh, the uh, northern Virginia area, this Washington suburb. And we drove in. We my dri- my wife was my driver because I haven't driven since my uh, leg went bad a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's what got us here at least. Yeah. And why are you here today? Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about uh, the 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 award, the recognition that was given today. Well, I I am honored by being here to be recognized for my uh, work in uh, the non non not usual activities of uh, psychology. Um, it's really my <clears throat> functions uh, as a citizen uh, that uh, landed me here in recognition of having done things to uh, be useful to a lot of people, specifically uh, high school teachers. Um, It all started with my getting the idea that, hey, wouldn't it be nice to teach psychology in high school? Well, as it turned out, uh, that, uh, that was... Uh, kind of late because uh, a former roommate of my wife's when they were in college was a high school psychology teacher and she was teaching psychology. Uh, So uh, that one thing led to another. But my interest in high school psychology was a feeling that there was room for it. Um, and if you could take psychology in high school, as people now are doing and increasingly so, uh, you got room for other material that's relevant to a psychologist's background. Um, I, my first uh, 
job uh, after my degree was at Martinsburg, west of Virginia, which is about 60 miles away. And I was working there, and I had a group of uh, uh, student trainees uh, who were going after their doctorates at Catholic University. And I uh, knew that, hey, some of these kids, and I was one of them actually, uh, some of these kids knew more about a field of psychology that I uh, didn't know much about, my PhD notwithstanding. I specifically was missing a di uh, sufficient background in statistics. So uh, a, I knew of this gentleman, uh, but one of the really good psych teachers of statistics uh, was uh, working part-time at uh, Catholic U. And so I hopped in my car, and, and at that point, you know, we're talking about mid-50s, mid-1950s, it wasn't all that difficult to drive from Martinsburg to Catholic University, take Maury Lohr's statistical, advanced statistics course, and drive back that night. Uh, that's no longer quite as easy. Uh, but what I'm getting at is that if one uh, could study uh, psychology in high school, you had more time when you went beyond high school to study material that you would not otherwise have time for. And I was in the position of having graduated from, uh, as, a, as my, my undergraduate degree, uh, was from Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts. Now, Clark is not a particularly well-known school, uh, except that it's uh, very highly regarded small college uh, these days. Um, and psychology and Clark were closely related. The uh, first president of Clark uh, was... Uh, interested in in developing uh, the <clears throat> the uh, psychology teaching program and he did so and Clark was the outstanding teacher f site for studying psychology in and we're, we're talking now about the uh, late uh, 1800s early 19. 1900s. Okay, so I came from Clark where psychology was very important, uh, where, in fact, the we're sitting here in the American Psychological Association building, but that's where the American Psychological Association began, was at Clark. I didn't know that. And uh, when the, uh, st the students high school teachers, students, uh, come to Clark. They co come to the room that was the office that uh, uh, was uh, in the main building uh, where Jonas Clark uh, did his work. So anyhow, uh, I, I wander, but I had... The, the good fortune of having b been to and known about Clark and its uh, role in the history of psychology. And at the same time, uh, I was moderately active in uh, APA. Uh, I, I'm not 
uh, an, an organization kind of individual, but I was interested in belonging to the Psychology Association and taking some part in it, which uh, I did for a number of early years. So I could put I I, I could put together my col- my college school and my professional association and come up with the idea that hey Clark knows about psychology and APA knows about psychology students put them together and you offer to the group that I was interested in the high school level people offer those teachers of psychology in, in high schools. And there were, there were many of them, but there were a few. And um, it worked beautifully. The, uh, the people from Clark and, uh, from, and from APA who worked on developing this workshop for high school teachers. Uh, turns out that they were just superb people, and you may even have met one of them here today, em- uh, Emily uh, Chesness. Uh, it was she and the, at the time, uh, I guess she was one of the uh, proctors or something uh, at Clark, worked together to put together a program for high school teachers. And I went to all of the uh, sessions once it got started, and that that would have been about 15 years ago because there have been 14 sessions of this workshop for high school teachers. Uh, I've missed out for one uh, reason or another the last couple of years. Um, and that unique position benefited uh, the people who were interested in developing teaching in high schools of psychology. Um, there aren't many people who would ordinarily be thinking about uh, the, a university to undertake such a new uh, endeavor. But Clark, being uh, what it was in the history of psychology, said, oh, sure, that's perfect for us. And they've been very good. It, co- uh, it costs Clark, I know, a nice figure, at least for an individual, uh, it's a nice figure to provide free uh, board and room for the people coming to the workshop. All they have to do is show up and be educated. Yeah, it costs them nothing to attend. Is that correct? The high school teachers who come out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about uh, how I got to be. Uh, recognized as you are today for the work you do. Yeah, this citizen psychologist um, recognition by Dr. Jessica Henderson Daniel. And um, yeah, what does it mean for you to contribute as a citizen? Um, and as a psychologist, obviously, you can't pull those two things apart. But what does it mean to you uh, to be recognized for all these contributions that you've made? And the citation was great. In fact, I might start out this episode, uh, I'll just tell you this, that I might take a picture of it and read it because I think it does give a nice uh, background of all, all the work that you've done uh, uh-huh. for psychology. Um, but what does it mean to you to uh, to be recognized as a, as a citizen psychologist? <laughs> Okay, uh, to me it means a great deal in part uh, because 
citizenship per se is so important. I came here, I'm an, one of the people who are not highly, regra- highly regarded by our government t- right now. I was an immigrant. I was three years old, and I landed in New York with my mother uh, January 1st of 1930. Wow. From yeah, where? I, where, did, where were you born? I was born in Poland. And my father had come over to this country uh, to, you know, try to improve life for him, him and his wife. He didn't know when he left that she was pregnant with me. Um, so somehow the uh, the citizenry, the, the government, this whole area is important. It, it uh it was became a, a very important part of my life. Um, we were, of course, uh, very, very poor. My dad came over, and he worked as a uh, busboy and uh, waiter at a deli, um, and eventually saved enough nickels to get my mother and me over here, 1930. Now, they worked very hard, and before too long, I worked with them. Uh, eventually, they, they saved their nickels and got a little candy store. Is this in New York City? No, no, this is would be in Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, it's in Worcester, all right. Where Clark is. Uh-huh. And uh, it just went from there. Um, my father became a peddler. Uh, he drove through the mill towns around uh, the Worcester area. Uh, the Black, I guess it's Blackstone River, that went through provided power for some of the factories that grew up there. These factories no longer exist. In fact, the first time I saw uh, Crompton and Knowles Looms Works, uh, where I had worked part-time, in fact, while I was at Clark, I I was saddened just so, so much he was an important part of my life, uh, and the building was just totally in wrecks because they no longer built looms there. And many of the uh, uh, industries that characterized Worcester uh, were uh, falling by the wayside. So, I guess what I'm uh, getting away from is the the experience of being uh, an immigrant um, and growing up in a family that was uh, working hard to... uh, established themselves here, uh, this had an impact on me. And that impact was very obvious uh, when World War II happened. Uh, When I was 17, I wanted to join the Navy. Now, at 17, you can't join the Navy unless you get a parent to sign up for you. And that doesn't sound like such a big deal unless you stop and think, well, here are these, here's this immigrant couple with their one and only child, 
willing to sign him up to go fight World War II. But the tenor of the times was such that everybody was, almost everybody, universally so, was a uh, what we think of as uh, proud of the country and patriotic. Uh, the other guys were really the bad ones, and you had, you had to go fight them. Okay, so my folks signed for me to get in the Navy, and I, I was in for a couple of years. I know full well that... <clears throat> The Navy did more for me than I did for the Navy. <laughs> but uh, I guess that kind of back, background as a uh, um, as a as a as a migrant is what we think of them as today. Uh, and the the years of uh, World War II and the uh, tenor that it gave to the country, um, especially uh, with Franklin Roosevelt as president. Now, we know that Roosevelt wasn't perfect, but... He was certainly a remarkable uh, president, and uh, <clears throat> you just had a a feeling for this country as being yours. Um, I think that somehow in the back of my head many heads, I assume, uh, had you feeling that you owed the country something. You weren't just here to uh, enrich yourself. Uh, you, uh, you thought about what you could do for the country that you loved. But in that... With that background, it was easy for me to look on many situations and relate to them not so much as a psychologist, but as a citizen. Now, sure, I used what skills psychology had uh, given me, um, but one could... Uh, help uh, the educational efforts in the country and that's really where most of my uh, uh, most of the basis for the award today uh, but sometimes you could uh, be a uh, a psychologist and it had practically nothing to do with being a good citizen uh, I, I think, for example, one of the uh, things that uh, Dr. Daniel mentioned, uh, at the time, uh, my, my, my wife had, had died cancer. Um, I was single, and I was... Uh, dating a woman, uh, <clears throat> a Chinese woman, and went with her one time to a meeting of the local uh, Chinese American society. And they were they were that meeting was part partly to honor three student compositions. And they were the three students got financial prizes, and it occurred to me that, gee, it's it's nice, but 
I felt that they gave so much money to the first prize winner and relatively little to the second and third prize winners. And I talked with with those all of the all three of those at the uh, at that meeting, and I talked with uh, the parents of the third place winner, and uh, it occurred to me later, and I cleared it with them, that is it okay if we supplement uh, the prize money that they got? which I did. I supplemented the money for the second and third place winners. And it was a very good investment. I still am in touch with that youngster. She could have been like 16 years old at the time. Uh, She's since married, has a couple of kids. Uh, Her husband's a physician in North Carolina. They live a happy life, as far as I know. But uh, to me, support for uh, those two kids uh, is a kind of citizen citizenship activity. Uh, you're supporting uh, what goes on in terms of the development of uh people who uh, are not just born to Anglo parents. Um, Now, here I am talking to somebody who's very much involved with services for non-Anglo U.S. people. But uh, I, I remember that partly because it's almost time again to uh, send a Christmas card uh, to uh, this family. But my point is that if you are aware of your of the possibilities for citizenry kinds of activities, they're all around you. Um, and I think uh, other things were mentioned in the uh, citation other than the very big uh, uh, activity of supporting the uh, uh, work of Clark University and APA in developing this workshop for high school teachers of psych. Yeah. Um, well, that's where I, uh, that's where I know your name from uh, is because those high school teachers speak so highly. They're so grateful uh, for what you do. Uh, in fact, I just had Maria Vita on the, the same podcast. Oh. And uh, she speaks so highly of you. And yeah, I think you know her. Oh, I sure do. Yeah. Um, very well. Um, she was, I think, in probably the f- third of the workshops that Clark and APA put on. And I worried about this kid because she looked so almost withdrawn. She was so quiet. And I wondered, hey, is is she okay? Well, then there was a section of the workshop where the teacher students could present some input to the rest of the group. Well, at that time, Maria Vita was uh, running rats in teaching psychology or in teaching at her high school, and she just blossomed. And it was amazing, and uh, we've been in touch at times since then. Now, she nominated you for this citizen psychologist. That's right. Is that right? 
I didn't know that until earlier today, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I surmised that it was the case. Um, she had asked me for some, some kind of biographical stuff, which I presented and forgot about it. She never said what she wanted it for, but I guess it was useful for her to have that information to uh, make the, to uh, suggest the nomination. Yeah, I know when I get home, I'm certainly going to be in touch with her. Yeah, it's interesting that here you and I are uh, given these uh, citations for citizen psychologist and uh, the people who nominated us for me, uh, Linda Wolf, I'm not sure if you know her, but uh, no. and for you, Maria Vita. And I know both of those folks pretty well. And I would say that they are both citizen psychologists in their own right, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I know that uh, the the folks who go to Clark, um, I've not been. I, I hope to get out there someday. I'd love to see it. Um, but they are so appreciative of what you uh, what you have done in creating that and sustaining that for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that they have even now. I think they're trying to copy the model um, because of some additional funding they they have got received. <laughs> have you yeah. have you heard about that? Oh yeah. Okay, so you're in the loop. M- much bigger bucks than I ever had. <laughs> Yeah, so it sounds like Dave Myers uh, is uh, been help, is going to help them out uh, to to do that, yes. so that more high school teachers can experience this thing. Yeah, uh, it seems really. It, it just it seems like it is kind of a game changer for high school teachers to attend there. Yes, uh, if nothing else, there. There is a reward for them in being recognized and treated the way they get treated. And I had very little to do with this, I assure you. Uh, They are treated as contributing members of society who have something important to offer and who deserve the support and respect of the rest of the population. Uh, no, I, I'm delighted. Uh, it may very well be, incidentally, that sometime in the future the Clark APA workshop will die off. Entirely possible because uh, other uh, people are in getting interested in supporting high school psychology. If, and I have to say, I had hoped early on in the uh, C- C- series of uh, workshops, hey, wouldn't it be great to uh, duplicate the uh, Clark APA workshop elsewhere? And in fact, I I met with the woman who at the time headed up the education office that we're sitting in. And uh, she was supportive, but didn't have the funds for it. Um, And one of the things we we hoped would happen did. Uh, The teachers... Uh, got to know one another at the workshop, and those that were geographically close to one another developed a little kernel of uh, self-help. Um, and that's what these a, a new wor- workshop, like the uh, one that's been going on, uh, what that's going to be like. I did not uh, go to the one in, I forget where it was now, the recent one. It, it was held in Utah. It was an APA sponsored. The high school summit. Oh, yeah. yes. This, that's it. The, yeah. the, the, the word summit keeps right. coming that's up right. for that meeting. <laughs> yeah. Um, the hope that we had before there was talk of summit uh, was that small groups would get together 
where there was where it was geographically possible, and some of them started doing that. Uh, but it was all very informal, um, and they particularly enjoyed learning from one another. I mean, one psych teacher in high school knows something that the teacher down the road doesn't know about, and they trade and learn from one another. And that now is going to, with, with the money that uh, Dave Myers uh, contributed to APF, um, that will help to develop the kinds of workshop experiences uh, that hopefully would go beyond what Clark had to offer. Well, I hope that Clark stays around for a long time. Uh, but I do hear what you're saying. Uh, there is now support that wasn't there uh, 15 years ago when Clark started. Uh, do you what was what was available for high school students back in 2000 or whenever you were starting to think about Clark? You you mean what was available to for, them? I'm sorry for high school psychology teachers 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 yes. Um, there, uh, there wasn't very much in the way of formal assistance. Now, those who uh, wanted to go on and get an advanced degree, get their master's, and a couple of them, like uh, somebody that was here today who's been active in the psychology teacher group, um... Amy Feinberg. Oh, Feinberg, yeah. I mean, she, uh, for example, is an example of somebody who could mobilize some people locally and they could get together informally. And those groups did spring up. Uh, and they learned from one another. There wasn't any structured kind of uh, workshop uh, or educational uh, trade-offs uh, in those early years. This would have been like, yeah, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. They uh, they could have been history teachers, and one day the principal came in and said, oh, you're teaching psychology this year. That happened a lot. Still does. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Um, and these these people learned on their own. They learned by uh, meeting uh, other psychology uh, teachers who knew just a smidgen more than they did. Not much, maybe, but a smidgen more. Um. Now it's it's a lot more organized, yeah. And hopefully, uh, as the workshop model uh, expands in other areas, uh, it will uh, prove to be a big resource. Um, so I have a question: when when did it occur to you that high school was the place? where you wanted to put your investment. Did you have a conversation with somebody? Did it, uh, were you, were you in a meeting where you realized there was this need or who are these high school teachers that you, you had met or seen? Okay. There was only one high school teacher that I knew even reasonably well. Uh, she had gone to, uh, college, uh, in, in Virginia uh, with somebody who was actually teaching psychology in high school. And uh, when at one point when I s uh, said to this woman, gee, wouldn't it be nice if uh, they taught high school in psychology, uh, taught psychology in high school? And she said, Lee, that's what I do for a living. She was actually a t one of the few psych teachers around. Of course, this was in 
a Northern Virginia community, which is pretty advanced. And that just uh, stimulated me to, to think, hey, wouldn't it be nice if other, if, if other schools uh, could get psych teachers going? And what motivated me, I was telling somebody earlier today, was my uh, was my want, uh, thinking that hey here I am I'm I'm the assistant chief psychologist in a department of two um, and I'm spending time driving from Martinsburg to Catholic University where Maury Lohr, a good, psych, a good teacher of psychology uh, and well-known st uh, statistician, uh, I had to go take a coursework with him at, at the expense. I'm thinking much more of, you know, just driving to class uh, to Catholic University to learn something that... I could have learned if I had had more time in graduate school. I would have taken that course then. This was advanced statistics. But, hey, your, your, uh, your, graduate, school, your graduate school uh, time is filled as it is with a lot of coursework. And that's what made me think, well, hey, there's so much time that you waste in high school. If that time could be spent doing a psych course, as it is increasingly being done now, then you'd have more time when you got to graduate school to do these courses that you need and want to take, uh, instead of coursework that you could have done when you were in high school. Um, it, was, it was that, I mean, I just happened to have been lucky in uh, knowing this uh, woman. Um, we'll see her again in a few days when we exchange Christmas presents. Um, but, you know, that helped me to uh, uh, organize my thinking that, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we had psychology in high school to free up some of the room that uh, you need in college and graduate school? Yeah. Well. It's as simple as that. Well, it was an idea that has gone on to uh, to help a lot of high school teachers, and um, and I know that I speak for them directly because I've heard it from their mouths. That uh, if if you've never heard it, I will now represent them. Uh, thank you for <laughs> your contribution to high school psychology uh, on behalf of all those teachers who attend Clark and all those who will attend Clark and this new model. Yeah. Uh, it is so meaningful. It touches uh, their lives. It touches their students' lives. Um, hopefully, we are creating in our high school students uh, citizens um, that will go on to do great things and take care of people mm -hmm. uh, as you've done in your career. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, it was so nice to hear your story and uh, to sit down with you. And I've just appreciated this day that we've get, we've been able to spend together. So um, yeah, yeah. So um, have a have a great day. Uh, we will see you around. It seems like I only run into you at APA, so maybe I'll see you back here again someday soon. All right. Okay. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully so. Thank you. Mm -hmm.